It's a soggy day at Saucon Valley Country Club in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania for the 42nd U.S. Senior Open. Jim Furyk, familiar with golf courses just like this, having grown up in the Keystone State. He's the defending champion. Rich Lerner alongside Gary Koch, and a good start for Furyk. Yeah, it was. Uh, he mentioned playing last week in the U.S. Open at the Country Club was great prep for this week. It paid off today. In with even par 71, which is a solid score given the difficulty of the uh, layout and the conditions. VJ Singh finishing up. Yeah, second shot here at the par 3. Ninth, it finds the hole with a tough day for VJ Singh. He would shoot 75. And here's where it stands in the clubhouse. Two under 69 is Paul Goidos. Great start for Mark Hensby. Scott Verplank past U.S. Amateur winner is in red figures after one hole. Steady Rod Pampling as well with a birdie on the board. And former U.S. Open champion twice, in fact, Retief Goosen. Podrick Harrington making his U.S. Senior Open debut. 71 for the Irishman, three-time major champion. Time now for the marquee grouping presented by Rolex. It's Steve Stricker, who won the U.S. Senior Open in 2019. Ernie Els, two times a U.S. Open champion. And Scott Perrell has to be factored as he drives the ball exceedingly well. And now let's go out to Ernie Els. Shot on the way up the hill here at the par 4 10th. Beautifully judged. Players will have to deal with that a little bit more today. Ball spinning back. We didn't see a lot of that early in the week. This is a dual Putting from right off the top of one of these little rolls in the green. So down the hill. Kevin Sutherland has it. Nice way to get started. And that's what Ells has done. And similarly, here is uh, the irrepressible Jay Haas. 68 years of age, second oldest man in the field. Mm -hmm. Starts off with a birdie. Rich, the first hole, the only hole on the golf course. And now to 15. This is Rob LeBritz. Just a moment ago, young man in his first year on the Champions Tour qualified. Oh, oh, what about Robbie? All of his members at Glen Arbor in Bedford, New York, are going to be excited to see that. Stephen Alker. One, that was from 105. Good looking shot here. Laid it up here on this par five. That's pretty much what he's been doing since. Well, he there's absolutely 50. no weak. Oh. Yeah, that is no mistake. 604 yard par five. So uh, players will be hitting fairly long third shots in there. Good shot by DeMar. Second for Alker. Yeah, 48 yards got carried all the way back on that ledge. Should hit, skip, and hold. Yeah, just like that. That's the great thing about the guy's game. There is no weak. Quigley at the 12th. Let's see if we can get somebody to throw it in there behind the mm -hmm. hole a little bit and bring it back, kind of like that. Beautiful shot. Big time save there. All year long. Tap in birdie, Quigley at the 12th. You think of the, uh, you think of the golf courses that support the USGA and their players, their professionals, their amateur champions. They get into a USGA championship and everybody's watching right now. And it is just a huge thing for everybody back at their club to be able to bribe. 116 yards, just trying to take a little bit off of a pitching wedge, try to control the spin a little bit. See if he can use one of those little slopes. Should come back a little. Mm -hmm. How about it? Here we go. Take a look. He's a, a strong guy, though not tall. He's reminiscent of Ian Woosnam. Makes the ball extremely well. It's him in it. Here uh, at three. From 133, that needs to get up. Yo, uh -oh. that's what we were talking about. That's yeah, Sockin right Creek, the, just yep. short of the green here at three in that hole location. 
Got to be able to control the spin here. Might need to get up as well. Got to sit. Yeah, that's fine. Jimmy, I hate to bring up something bad, but this is his fourth shot. Yeah, this from 70 yards, just a matter of controlling the spin. Go in. And Miguel's in there about 10 feet for his buggy. Uh, you kind of want to have the Steve Stricker no spin wet shot. We need a hat trick. Scott Perrell. Always the toughest part yes. putt in the group is that third for birdie. <laughs> That was fun. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, big oh, easy. Ernie Ellis with a little bit of confidence there on 11 and 12 making putts. Yeah, it's his second consecutive putt. He has, as you guys are let go, he released. Wow. I guess that was the spot to be. Uh, short short like right green. Putting on a show. Get on it. That one's pretty good. Well, that one's really good. Oh. Have to be able to control the spin. You could see these balls zipping off the front if they're not careful. Beautiful shot there by Ernie. Putter going inside a little quickly, so a right to left putt, you would think he would have a better chance of making than one that goes the other direction. Yep. You called it, Gary. Of course, those right handers, they like those right to left putts. We're at seven. You see he's plus two right now. Sound like a pretty solid strike. Great shot from the 52-year-old. Easy to get out of those putts that go left to right. Now back at seven, Rod Pampling. He gets one back. Young players, just really a, a wonderful competition down the stretch. It's Mark Hensby at 11. Well, I thought it was great, Peter, as well, to see an old-style golf course. Like, where did you come Dustin from? Dustin was busy making travel plans, oh, okay. so he was, he was distracted. <laughs> Bernhard Langer. This is such a thick lie here. Just have to kind of release through. Wow. Oh, my. Mark Hensby for birdie at 11. Actually was in the field last year, but he withdrew. Mark's getting ready to turn 51 here at the end of this month. Place it way up in the air on a nice line if it's the right club. Oh, yes, it is. That's one of the best shots we've seen here at 17 all day. That's what he told me Absolutely. <laughs> earlier this week. Said, I still love it. Who doesn't? All right, Perel. Let's see if Scott can kind of right the ship a little bit and on the green, but not an easy two putt up that slope. Seven iron for Strick. Subtle slope from the right to the left on this screen. A little left of the hole location. Needs to get down. There's, there's the slope. And it gets that. And it funnel down into that low. And Jake, right. that was Fred Ridley, by the way, who handed it you was. the trophy. That was. That and was. President of the USGA now. And I beat. Chairman I beat, of Augusta. I beat the great Hill Irwin by one shot. What a putt for Perel. How about it? Boy, did he need that. You don't expect those, do you? Take a look from behind here. And as uh, Cook was saying, a huge swing from right to left. And Scott would probably tell you, Peter, I'm just trying to get it up there somewhere <laughs> around the hole. It happened to go in. And, you know, you certainly love it when it does. Pulling my visor off my head. Oh. Oh. 
kind of wish that yeah, one up there. Yeah, that was a give up stroke. Yeah, he kind of hit that one on the run, didn't Low he? Low left, looked like uh, Rich Lerner's pitch, the Iron Pigs game last yeah, night. had to remind me, Jake. They'd be thrilled to welcome you here, Jake, always. All right, Strick, can you do it? Is that that yeah, one? Yeah. why not, Jake? And here we go, just like on the, uh, the 12th hole, the hardest part to make is that short one for the third birdie in the group. Third shot here at 12. Okay. Got it over the lip. Now, can he get it all the way to the hole? Sure, he can. Look out. Whoa. To your point, provided it doesn't plug, pretty good day. Yeah, we've seen this putt made, Rich. It's uphill and moves slightly right. Another guy who stayed in great shape approaching 50 in no other sport can you be a rookie at least that I can think of a rookie at 50. This is a birdie putt for Glenn Day to get to two under par. Nice to putt from behind the hole not much break. How about three birdies in a row. And so you put this ball close you've got to really swing hard at this. Yeah you have to take a chance as well. Needs to go just a little bit. What a good oh, shot. Yeah, he did. Beautifully done. I'll tell you what, that was outstanding from right there. Back a little right at the hole. That's very nicely done. How did you get it that close? All right, keep the speed up here, Ernie. Accelerate through it. See if you can do that. Not no, much break. No. Just kind of wished it, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Boy, it looked so good early in the round with uh, some of those putts and last few holes. Just a little wishy. You're right, Gary. That shows up more on the shorter putts. Yes, correct. Uh, it's a little like Will Zalatoris. Yeah, takes advantage of his power. Two big shots to get it right there at the front edge of the green. Slide a little right, firm enough. Strong guy was always a long hitter. Mm -hmm. Well, this was just a moment ago. This is Eddie Kirby over at 15 for birdie, the 59 year old from Rhode Island, Wakefield, Rhode Island. <laughs> How about it? Uh, I'm betting that's his first birdie of his U.S. Senior Open <laughs> Championship. Uh, yeah. Yeah, birdie putt for the guy they call Broadies. One, two, PGA Tour Champions majors. Yeah, he's a gutty player. I mean, don't don't kid, no. don't kid yourself. Do a pretty good lie. Sets a lofted up in the air, landed just over that bunker. Really well done. But wow. One of those you have to try to take a chance to get it close, and he did, and pulled it off. Hensby with his second up the hill to this very cute, what is the finishing hole for the membership here at Saucon Valley, playing as the 15th. Third shot now, the par 5 12th. Jay Haas, two under. And out of the left rough, fortunately, a short shot. And there you go. Utilize that side. 12 feet slightly right to left, but not much. Oh, he had a good putt there. That was a good stroke. Yeah, it was. I think he might just hit a just touch too firm. T shot set that one up. Yeah. Um, players have struggled here on this second hole. Hensby for a birdie. And he adds to that lead. Gets it to four under. Three feet, not much to it. Good two putt.
return for him. Oh, yes. perfect. There, sure. there was an example, Gary, you talked Ooh, about boy. the way that Jay lets the putter head release. Ernie, 137, little nine iron has to carry on the putting surface or he can come back into that penalty area. Yeah, wise play there, John. We we were speculating earlier in this round that the players should just play it pin high left. Land by the hole and just zip it back into the water. 52 degree sand wedge there for Scott. Also right center of the green. It's a wise play. Oh, hello. Those balls kiss? Yeah, they did. Okay. It did catch the primary oh. rough, but a real good lie. He's asking for it to go, and well, that has got to be pretty special from what I've been hearing all day. Hold up very well for guys over 50. Oh. Talking 6,900, 7,000 yards. Absolutely. And you know the great thing about this golf course, Peter, I guarantee you, you get done playing, you've probably used every club in your bag. Scott's hung up a little bit on that left, so not breaking quite as much as he might think. It is. Stretch. Oh. And that one went across the hole. Scott's hung out there on the left. Amazing the difference in the stroke. When he gets away from the hole, the putter gets out and he holds the finish. When he's in short, oftentimes he never gets to that finish position. Just kind of makes contact with the ball and the energy is all gone. There's nothing left. I think if he played it straight, he could make it either left side, right side. That did have a little left to right break, but good birdie. Might have been, is that a skin? That <laughs> no, skin? Yeah, I think there were a couple already today, oh, yeah. John, so, uh, but not many. Rob works on his game with Carl Alexander, who was the head pro at Country Club of Purchase in New York. Carl's father was the great photographer, Jules Alexander, who, when you watch, you see all the pictures, the black and white pictures of Ben Hogan. And birdie punt now, Paul Broadhurst, 14th hole to get to three. Yeah, another wonderful approach shot. And uh, nice birdie. Yeah, three feet here, but he's struggled on these a little bit. He's missed a couple ooh, of them. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. That was a huge push. Club face was wide open when he made contact. This is Mark Hensby straight up the hill. It's slow for his birdie at 17 to extend his lead. Well, he busted it, but he lost it quickly to the left. Rob LeBritz, back at nine. We saw his tee shot to this point here to get to two under. And, and nicely he done. does it. Peter, I talked to him the other day. I asked him, you know, oh, here we go. Well, location on the right. So if Rocco's going to attack, he's got to bring the right side, the bunker to the right of the hole in the play. Well, he did. And how about that? Beautifully done. Beautiful stroke. Yeah. So, Peter, uh, you guys that work with Stan Utley, grip pressure, I assume fairly light to allow that putter head to release? Correct. You're gripping the club just enough to be able to allow the club head to set in the back, back swing. Stephen Alker now at 13. Up over this rise right there. Now it flattens out. Did he do it? Oh, back to back. That's, that's more what we see from Stephen Alker all year. Yeah, this was a moment ago. Chris DeMarco for birdie at the sixth. Not an easy one. First part of the putt uphill and then over a little roll and down to the hole and oh, yeah. walk it in Chris DeMarco. I think wasn't DeMarco the first guy to really come out with a with a claw or a He got the grip. information from Skip Kendall. Rocco Mediate, we saw Chris DeMarco, his first ever PGA Tour win came in the state of Pennsylvania. That was at Waynesboro Country Club outside of Philadelphia. And Rocco yeah. from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, now one back. He really never opens the club face, so you know, it kind of plays from a shut position, so it's de-lofted anyway. Definitely, that does go into a nice and low little check release. Oh, oh, Beautiful. 
Birdie putt now for Mark Hensby at the 18th hole. Right out of the low, steeply uphill. And that's really nicely done. You see his caddy there, Rich? That is Mike Carrick. Mike Carrick was on the bag for Tom Kite when he won the 1992 U.S. Open at Pebble Beach. So uh, Hensby's caddy, <laughs> very familiar with USGA open conditions. Wow, that was slow. Yeah, they can start the ball on that line. They just need to know it as Jay's tapping this in for his par. Yeah. So Peter, technically that was a one putt because he missed the green, right? Correct. He's now had 10 one putts in the first 15 holes. Wow. There's that close stance, Gary, you were talking about. I think what that does for him, I've watched him on the range so much, I've played golf with him. It helps him to get that right shoulder to turn through the ball so he can cover the ball. Bernard Langer. Expect this one to go in after watching uh, Alker's putt. Should know the line. Yep. All right, all right. You, show, <laughs> you show these guys the line, I tell yep. you what, they're going to make them. And this is just a moment ago at 17, Alex Chica. <laughs> if that ball misses that flag, it's going to go all the way to the fringe. There's so much slope, and he knows it. Over at 7 now, Rocco, with that new putting style. It's working. Oh. How about this ball striking round, Peter? He's only missed one green today. Contact is good, drawing back towards the flag. Looks good if it's the right club. Mm. Oh, oh, it oh. is. Wow, what a shot. Standing. His sons, Bill and Jay Jr. So Rocco taps in. Beautiful shot there for Rocco. Bogey free today. Rocco and Tim Petrovic. <laughs> All right, 15, Langer. Plus three. Still fighting, you know that. Oh, watch this. Yeah. And he didn't pull it back. There's some <laughs> special characters involved in my talking to myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tell me right. so. Oh, there we go. What a comeback. Yeah, Alker all the way back to even par. And you know, Peter, you have to think, too. Just under 40 yards. Similar distance to the last hole. We played that little low skipping pitch shot and just did another one. Not, not as good as the last one. That's still pretty toasty. Well, it shows you, Peter, the importance of the short game. Yeah, like this one right here. He's got to be careful coming down the slope. This is really good. But you know, it's funny. Everybody has fallen into this thing about farther, farther, farther. You have to hit the ball farther. Bounds. <laughs> so the quickest way to lower your score is to get better with a short game. <laughs> and like this right here with Scott Perrell. Had to have a clean strike. It was right up against that little crease, and that was really well done. For All right, Ells with his fourth. Yep, can also drive it in there low, little check and release. It checked up pretty good. Yeah, see, these there guys are all just, yeah. you know, you get around the green, you get it up there, you give yourself a chance to make the putt. Actually played with Jerry Barber, Barber at the Masters one time. All, all right. right, great three there. Silky smooth. Can't do much, maybe right edge. Great look at that uh, putter with the heel off the ground. Uh, you know, it just goes to show you there is no one way to do it. You know, you got to find a way that works for you. Glenn Day now at 15 up the hill. Got to watch your spin. Whoa. How about it? Huh. Well, that's a tap in bird. There's no interruption, kind of like our coverage. How about it? Oh, my oh wow. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Grabs his head like well he just well had a brain freeze there. How's that not go in? I don't know, but with 10 one putts and 17 holes, he's got these he's greens figured out. It. You know, yeah. I mean, his speed has been phenomenal. Well, I partnered with Jay and the Legends of Golf for I don't know how many years. Birdie putt now at the eighth. Rocco Mediate. Up the hill to start, and then back down as it crests. Right there should start picking up some speed. Moving left. 
All right, good luck. Green kind of muscled his seven iron up there. Six iron here for Strick. Half the guard against going long or left. Awkward pitch shot from over there. Back left hole location. Trying to bring it in from right to left on a nice line. Nicely done. Well, you like digging one out on the last hole. Post a good score. Great way to begin the championship. Enough. Good effort. How about this, Rich? This 67 is going to tie Jay's low round in this championship. He's done it now four times. The last time he did it, round three in 2006 at Prairie Dunes Country Long, Club. How Long about Jeff. that? This is Tim Petrovic. He's got this putt. For a birdie to tie for the lead at four under. You do it? Oh, man. So Tim Petrovic shoots another good round. He's always on the first page of these major championships. He's had a couple of chances. Up that slope, now down the slope. And this looks good. Oh, oh, oh. my, it creases the right edge. Perfect speed. Proved to be an excellent Ryder Cup captain. Certainly was. Uh, but he managed absolutely. them well. He let them go. No question. That's Glenn Day at 17 for birdie. Wow, does that break? falls off the table. Yeah, there's another one left. It just keeps going. Yeah, he's shaking his head that <laughs> everybody under reading that pot. Let's see if Ernie can knock one down and get back to even par. Turn, turn, turn. Wasn't that the birds? It was the birds. I thought so. We've got some musical references going here today. We do. We, we always do. I have a feeling he's going to knock this in. He's going to play enough break. Way out there to the right. I'm not sure he hit it. Well, he would have made it <laughs> if he'd hit it. Frustration, for sure. So par for Scott here at the last. Yeah, you get out of your routine and got to keep grinding out here. Good round there for Strick. All right, 